Okay, so we've just started learning a little bit more about the atom and ions and isotopes and what happens within, nucle in, within a nucleus, things like that. Um, at this point, it's kind of fun to take a little detour into nuclear chemistry, just touching the surface a little bit, um, but looking at radioactivity, radioactive decay, nuclear reactions, things like that, um, because it also deals with the atom and some interesting things going on in the nucleus. Um, and so I want to start by taking a look at what you see here is the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, you'll notice a lot of things on there, things you're used to. Cell phones, uh, TV, radio, all the way on the left hand side. Then we have a light bulb that says visible spectrum, the sun, x-rays, radioactive elements. So essentially everything on here is a type of radiation. You're used to the word radiation meaning bad, dangerous, scary. Um, and in that case, it might be um, when we're over off in general on the right hand side of this spectrum, we're dealing with really high energy things. Um, it says there that they can be ionizing, meaning they can knock electrons off, for instance, turn different atoms into ions, really high energy things that can go into your cells and damage the DNA. So when you think radioactivity, you're thinking of just a small part of it. We are going to look a little bit more at how different radioactive elements might undergo radioactive decay and emit radiation um, that would be radiation you wouldn't want to mess around with. So we're going to look at four different types of radioactive particles of these particles that can be emitted from an atom from the nucleus um, when an atom's undergoing radioactive decay. So you'll be provided with these symbols. You just need to know them by name. For instance, alpha particles, they are the biggest particle uh, radioactive particle that we're going to work with. Um, alpha is a Greek letter. It looks kind of like a infinity sign that you didn't finish. Um, it's also like a weird, you might see it typed as like more of an A, um, kind of looks like a lowercase a. Um, so that's an alpha particle. We'll use the same notation that we learned last time where the number on top, in this case is a four, tells us the mass. And the number on bottom two tells us the atomic number. You can also, it's helpful to think about it as the protons in the case of nuclear chem, the protons or the positive charge. Um, so we have a mass of four, atomic number of two and this alpha symbol. Um, if you looked on the periodic table for what has two protons, you'd see that it's helium. So sometimes it's written as four, two helium. Either way is totally fine. Again, the alpha that I wrote, you might see written as like a weird A if it's typed. Um, alpha particle is the biggest particle we're working with. So actually it's the slowest, the lowest energy, um, and doesn't cause as much damage. I'm oversimplifying a little bit. Um, then we also have a beta particle. A beta particle is a weird B or like a B with a tail. It has no mass and it's actually negatively charged. So we say negative one. Um, if you think about what else has no mass and is negatively charged, close to no mass, um, hopefully you come up with an electron. So another way that's all right to write this, zero negative one, is an E for electron. So actually a beta particle, um, it's not that one of the atoms electrons from the, from the shells are being emitted. What's happening is that a neutron in the nucleus is sponta spontaneously decaying into a proton and electron. Um, then we have a weird thing called a positron. Everything about this is weird in my opinion. Um, but we have a positron, which is a positive beta particle or a positive electron. And I don't have better information for you other than that. Um, but it's the same exact thing, but we write it with a positive one instead of a negative one. And again, you can also call it a positive electron like so. Um, and then finally, we'll work with gamma radiation. Um, so those of you who are fans of the Hulk, same thing, uh, though this is real life. Um, and a gamma looks like the alpha particle, but twisted 90 degrees or like an infinity sign that, or like an eight that the top is cut off. It has no mass, no charge. It's just energy. It's actually a photon of light. Um, so when you have an atom that's really excited, that has a lot of extra energy, it might be getting rid of gamma particles um, to get rid of some of that energy. So where do all of these particles come from? Why are they randomly emitting different radioactive, why are atoms randomly emitting different radioactive particles? Um, 
generally, if a nucleus isn't stable, it'll try to become stable by radioactively decaying, by shooting something out of its nucleus. Um, and so what makes something stable? Just a little bit of background. You see I have this graph here. It's comparing the number of neutrons to the atomic number, or essentially the number of protons. Um, so in the nucleus of an atom, you have protons, which are positively charged, and neutrons, which are, which are neutral. Um, that shouldn't want to be held together. All of those positive protons should want to repel each other because they're like charges. Having the neutrons there kind of acting as spacers helps, and there's more going on there. Um, but if that ratio isn't quite right of protons to neutrons, we have an unstable nucleus. So there's this thing called the belt of stability or the valley of stability where you have the right number, the right ratio of protons to neutrons. And if you're not in this area, if you don't have that right ratio, you'll either undergo beta decay or alpha decay or emit a positron, do something to get closer to that perfect magic ratio. Um, so often, if the atom is too big, most radioactive elements are bismuth or larger. Um, if the atom is too big, Getting rid of an alpha particle, it makes the nucleus literally smaller, so the force holding it together doesn't have to pull over as large of a radius. Um, if there are too many neutrons for this perfect ratio, you'll undergo beta decay. If there are too many protons, it'll undergo positron de decay. So what do we do with all of this? Um, we can write complete and balance nuclear reactions. So all of the reactions we've been writing this year are chemical reactions. They're dealing with the electrons in the outermost shell, the valence electrons, either exchanging them or sharing them. Um, but when we're dealing with nuclear chemistry, we're dealing with the nucleus. Um, and so what we look at is slightly different, but we're still writing a reaction with the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And we still have to balance it. It's just rather than balancing number of atoms, um, we're going to be balancing mass and charge. So here are some examples. Um, where we generally want to start is in interpreting the question to be in this nuclide notation that we use above. So hydrogen three, if you remember from last lesson, that hyphen three, it's not a charge, it's not a superscript, um, that's telling us that we're dealing with an isotope of hydrogen that has a mass of three. So in this notation that we used above, hydrogen symbol is H, and it has a mass of three. Um, and then the bottom number is always the atomic number, is the number of protons. So even though that wasn't told to me here, I know that hydrogen always, if I look at my periodic table, has an atomic number or one proton. So I'm going to write that one in. Then we're dealing with decay. So whether we're talking about decay or radioactive emission, either way, we'll draw an arrow because what we're showing is how this particle, or how this um, atom is going to break apart. Um, in this case, it says it undergoes beta decay. So I know that one of the things this atom is spitting out is a beta particle. I wrote my particles again at the top for you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and write zero, negative one, and the beta, because that's one of the products of this nuclear reaction. Then I have to figure out what else must be in this reaction so that my total mass and my total atomic number or charge are the same on both sides. On the left-hand side, I currently have a mass of three. On the right-hand side, I have a mass of zero. So that means I need three so that the right-hand side equals the left. Three on the left, three on the right. Um, my bottom number, my, char or my charge or my atomic number on the left is a one. So that means everything on the right-hand side added together needs to get me one. I currently have a negative one. The only way to get that to one, if you think about like a number line, negative one to zero to one, that's a two. So double checking, does negative one plus two equal one? Yes. Does three plus zero equal three? Yes. That's how I know I've come up with the correct numbers on the right-hand side. Then based on what those numbers are, actually specifically based on the bottom number, I can identify, are we dealing with one of my radioactive particles up top or what from the periodic table should go there? And I'm never gonna use the mass number to identify it. As always, I'm going to use the bottom number, the atomic number, um, that tells me two. So what has two protons or an atomic number of two? Helium. 
And my final answer, my complete and balanced reaction, everything all together is everything in that green box. So a couple more examples to show you. U238. Similarly, that's telling me U with a mass of 238 undergoes alpha decay. So before I keep going, actually, I want to look at my periodic table, look at uranium and see what its atomic number is so I can fill that in on the bottom. So I look at uranium, it's in the like bottom of your periodic table, those two random rows, it's number 92. And I need that number there or I won't be able to add up the left-hand side and the right-hand side to make sure everything's balanced. Now, since it undergoes alpha decay, I'm gonna write my alpha symbol, which I know is always four, two for the numbers on the left. And then I see what else I need. So in order to get 238, I already have four. I'm gonna need another 234. 234 plus four gets me 238. For the bottom, I currently have two. I wanna to get to 92. So 90 is what's gonna do it. And then I always am using the, the 90, the bottom number, the atomic number to identify what element it is. And in this case, it's thorium. So that would be my reaction. One more for you. Uh, F18 emitting a proton. Uh, F18, that's actually already putting the 18 in the right spot. That would be the mass of the fluorine. Then I want to grab fluorine's atomic number for the bottom. It emits a positron, different wording, but again, we're just saying it's spitting out a positron. That's a zero, positive one. You don't have to write the positive sign. Um, and then I figure out I need 18 for the left, or sorry, I have 18 in the, on the upper number on the left. I currently only have zero, so an 18 on the right will do it. I have a one, eight more would get me to nine. And then what has an atomic number of eight? Oxygen. Um, so essentially always you wanna see what they give you, make sure you're filling in the protons um, and then write your radioactive particle using like arithmetic, figure out what numbers are missing and using the bottom of those numbers. That's always the number of protons, the atomic number. That's how you'd identify the element unless it were um, one of these particles, for instance. If you ever ended up with something that's zero and negative one, you'd write a beta because there's nothing on the periodic table that has a negative one um, as its atomic number. Okay, go try those.